welcome to the second episode of Truth in Tech, um, where we talk about some of the week's top tech stories. But we thought we'd kick off this episode with uh, like a New York story, because I'm in New York, and a Boston story, because Elise is in Boston. So, um, Elise, your Boston news of the week. Sure. Yeah, the big story was that Zipcar, which is a um, based in Cambridge here, uh, was acquired by Avis um, mm -hmm. for five hundred million dollars in cash, which is a lot of money. <laughs> and they said, yeah. That, yeah, they said that this would help them, you know, provide more offerings to their customers, also called Zipsters, and. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I use Zipcar. I actually like a lot of their marketing that they do for them. Um, oh, so you've actually used the service before? Yes, it. I'm a Zipster, and <laughs> I took a survey with them one time, and they were uh, some of the new offerings that they were hinting at were one way travel because right now you have to return the car to the spot. Oh, that you yeah, out. yeah. Okay. They had, there was talk of doing it so that you could, you know, take trips and actually drop it off at a different location. And then also they have a kind of hefty late fee if you return the car like a few minutes even after. Um, oh, really? Yeah. Huh. yeah. And uh, so it looks like they're trying to do away with that. So. Okay, that's cool. Um, yeah, I feel like I, I've heard like some sort of like, oh, this is going to be the ruination of Zipcar, and some people being like, is this even a good buy for Avis? Because I guess Zipcar's, um, they when they IPO'd, they were valued at one billion, um, and now they're and Avis bought them for five hundred million, but they are also growing a lot, like year to year. So I I feel like it's a good, it's a smart investment because they'll have more stability with Avis. And mm -hmm. um, I feel like they'll probably be able to still keep their brand because that's kind of what made them part of what made them so popular. Yeah. So. Yeah, and hopefully they can expand to more cities too. Yeah, I mean, we I think we have a, they are in New York, but I don't see them that often. Mm -hmm. Whereas, like in Boston, they're everywhere. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. Cool. Well, so my New York story is like. Hmm. It's well. So our MTA doesn't uh, isn't really the most tech savvy government office, um, but they finally released a real time train travel app, sort of the way Google Maps will tell you when trains are coming. Now the MTA can do it for a couple of the subway lines um, and the shuttle. Um, so it's not that useful yet, but it's a step in the right direction. Um, of course, most of the subway stations don't have Wi-Fi, and none of the trains do, so I don't know how useful it'll be, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's our city news. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. um, I think Boston has more Wi-Fi, or I'm usually able to use my phone more often on the T than I am on the subway. Yeah, there are certain spots where it... Like, Park Street's through. really good. Um, and then, like, the red line ones above ground, obviously. Yeah. Um, yeah, cool. Um, so let's see. For speaking sort of of mobile, um, this New Year's Eve was not so great for um, Apple. Their, uh, their head big store in Paris was uh, had a $1.3 million worth of iPhones and iPads stolen uh, at 9 p.m. New Year's Eve by four armed men. Um, so that, that was kind of a big deal. And all the police were out guarding the Champs-Élysées, so they didn't notice that there was anything amiss. Um, yeah. And, like, the second Robert big rivals had in like a month because they had a lot of iPads stolen at JFK too. Um, oh, not so good. I mean, drop in their, uh, you know, revenue bucket, but still. Well, yeah. That's a big story. Oh, man. Um, let's see, mobile. Oh, uh, fun fact for 
<laughs> Our next news story is that the U.S. now has more internet-connected devices than people. So I think it's 425 million uh, internet-connected devices to 315 million people. Yeah. People. That's, yeah. I would definitely like to see, and maybe the report had it, but I didn't look in any depth, like what the, which age groups kind of have, like the number of devices per age group. I feel like that would be interesting because um, more and more I'm seeing like younger kids with you know iPhones and Androids and whatever so I feel like it could be different than what I would typically expect I'm yeah not sure. that's a good point yeah um, so uh, I, what I thought uh, I mean I think is pretty cool um, it's this gesture-based interface company called Leap Motion. Um, they make this little, this little like, it's it's kind of this small, I don't know, like this, <laughs> this big <laughs> little <laughs> gadget that um, you plug in. It's a it like has a USB port. You plug it into your um, computer, and it enable it turns your computer into like a gesture-enabled machine. Um, and like they, they, well, on the demo video I was watching, the accuracy is like really crazy. It gets all, all, all ten fingers like down to 0 0.01 millimeters, and you can like go like this, and it'll like you can draw, you can write, and it's cool. I don't, I mean, I don't, I haven't ever really used the gesture-based machines. So I don't know how useful it is, but it looked really awesome. Yeah, um, it kind and of they just Harry got. Potter. <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah, like a wand. Yeah, exactly, because it mirrors exactly what you're doing to the screen, and it shows up. It was a really cool yeah. demo video, yeah. Yeah, I know, and it wasn't like a slick demo video. It was like an interview with some tech reporter, and it just still looked like, it looked so cool. Yeah, it was um, fascinating. Yeah. It brings uh, new meaning to no, uh, no touch. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> I know. Well, it would be nice to, like, so I guess right now they only it only works on computer processors, um, but they're like going to make versions that will work on your phone, and like that could be really nice because my phone gets so disgusting with screen, so like smudged and stuff. So if I could just like kind of hover my finger instead of having to touch, that would be really nice. Yeah. Um, yeah. So anyways, they got um, thirty million dollars in funding. And um, a deal with Asus, if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, it's a PC maker. Um, so that they'll start building laptops that have um, the gestures enabled in them. So that's pretty cool, I thought. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, and then our last sort of like story um, is in the Wall Street Journal this morning, um, like about more and more people signing up for Google. Plus, um, because they have to, or to, and I didn't realize, like, if you want to uh, write a review of, like, a business or a restaurant on Google, you now have to have a Google Plus account. You also have to have it for YouTube um, and for Gmail. So, like, they have all these new users, but they're, like, the question is, like, are they actually really using Google Plus, or do they just sign up once um, and then, like, never go back? Um, right. And I know, like, last year, Comscore um, estimated that average Google Plus users spend um, three minutes on the site each month, whereas like an average Facebook user spends 400. So that's like not that. <laughs> I don't know, like really, if people are using it as a social network, but certainly they have a lot of um, users whose data they can now pull, uh, which is you know it's a very it's a very aggressive way to get. Users, but people rely on yeah. stuff like Gmail so much that I think, like, like I have, I first signed up. Well, I'm using it now for <laughs> to do this hangout, but I first signed up because it was I wanted to keep my Gmail account. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I guess I have Google Plus too. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. Like, do you use it outside of like what we're doing now? Like, do you use it to, like, talk to friends and stuff? I've used it a couple times to do um, the Hangouts, I, I think, is yeah. the coolest feature as far as, like, outside of work-related or, like, company-related um, yeah. 
stuff. I think the Hangouts are the only thing I really use it for, just because you can have more people, um, you know, because Skype, you can only have, like, um, two, like, video yeah. guys, unless you want to pay for the premium, which right. I Right. <laughs> yeah. So, especially when this is free. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. And the mobile app for this is pretty good, too. Yeah. Um, it's although, pretty similar to a desktop. Mm -hmm. Although, I think, if I'm remembering the name correctly, it's called Rabbit, I think, is working on a new video conferencing, so similar to Hangouts, but it... Oh, really? Yeah. Um, but in So you don't have to join Google Plus to yeah, use it? Yeah, there, there nice. you go. But instead of the... It has a different, like, interface, so instead of the squares it will show the videos in circles and oh, cool. it'll have like an environment like background behind so it's kind of more of like a um, like a cocktail type of feeling to it like there's groups like you can have group conversations <laughs> nice. like a party yeah, yeah. okay that's so, cool I like that. yeah it looks pretty neat I think it's called rabbit okay we could record an episode on it sometime yeah yeah I like it um, so, apps of the week, Elise found this on Boston Innovation, which is an awesome Boston entrepreneur and education news site. So, what, 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 what did you find, Elise? Yes, uh, they had a six apps to help with New Year's resolutions. So I thought that was pertinent, saying we're now in yeah. 2013. <laughs> So, uh, not surprising, a couple of them were uh, for fitness, because <laughs> that seems yeah. to be the number one New Year's resolution. Yes. Um, so they had Gym Pact, uh, Run Keeper, which is located in Boston, mm -hmm. actually. Um, they're pretty cool, and they just redesigned their UI. Uh, so, nice. one of the ones I use to keep track of runs. Um, and then they have a couple other fun ones, like... Babbel. Yeah, I want to try Babbel. Yeah, especially if you like languages. Yeah. Um, right, I think it teaches you. Um, you can learn a new language. Yeah. You can learn it. That looks cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, one of them has a really lame name. I Ideal Me Light. I hate when people spell things with like L I T E instead of L I G H T. It's a dumb mm -hmm. name, anyways. I can't tell what it does from the description. But the other ones look cool. Yeah, I couldn't tell from that one either. <laughs> um, yeah, nice. We could use the rewards reward volunteers one for Soft Artisans Charity Committee. Oh, yeah. There you go. That's a good idea. Yeah. Cool. Well, I think that's all, I think that's all we have for this short work week. Um, but yeah. we will... We will be back next week with more stories to dissect. Um, until then, see you later. Uh -huh. Bye. Bye.